Welcome back, Planeswalkers, and welcome to another episode of The Hive Mind. My name is John. This is the show where I traverse the multiverse in search of other prominent members of the Magic the Gathering community. While we're out traversing, hey, why not stop on by Cardsphere.com? That's right, Cardsphere.com, the best place to buy, sell, and trade your paper Magic the Gathering cards. You could also hop on over to InkGaming.com, enter a promo code HiveMindMTG to get custom playmats for the HiveMind and 10th Street Hooligans. And if you, you're really in the giving mood, you could always hop on over to Patreon.com. You know, they said, we said, to support shows like uh, the Hive Mind, 10th Street Hooligans, and everything else, uh, all the other crazy stuff I got going on on this very channel. But without further ado, I would like to introduce my, uh, the Planeswalker that's joining me tonight, a very prominent one, one of my personal favorite YouTubers out there. Uh, I've been following this gentleman for a very long time. Planes walking in from Turlock, California, from the Booster Tutor YouTube channel. So, co-host of the Cumulative Upkeep podcast, Mr. Brandy Crane. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Yay. Oh, man, it's it's crazy. It's surreal. See the smile and the thumbs up in, in real time. Uh, this is awesome, man. I, it's always that surreal f feeling when you've been watching someone for, for years and, you you know, I feel like I know you. That, that's the whole YouTube thing, right? It's just yeah, like right. you feel like you know someone because you watch their stuff uh, and then you're talking to them live. It's, it's kind of surreal, but it's awesome. And you're like, oh, wait, you're like a human. Like you actually exist. <laughs> yeah. <and stuff>. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I talk to you in your video, but you don't yeah, respond. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends, he'll watch my videos and his wife is like, why are you talking to Brandon on the TV and stuff like that? Like she thinks he's <laughs> she's like video calling me and stuff. <laughs> it's like he's not letting you get a, a, a word in at all. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, yeah. So how was uh? How about a quick report on on GP Oakland? I'm sure you you met some cool people. Did you play in uh? I don't think you played in the main event, right? You no. said you did some side events. Yeah, I uh, uh did four uh Ultimate Masters drafts over two days. So. That was awesome. I met a ton of people, actually. I was surprised how many people came up to me and said hello and everything. So that was very cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I didn't go Friday. I was supposed to go with my wife, and I wanted to, like, shoot a video for the channel. But she's not really into magic, and she, like, doesn't really like big crowds. So uh, we, I said, eh, it's both our days off. Let's just stay home. And then uh, Saturday, went with my friend Tyson. And, yeah, it was packed there. Like, <clears throat> I don't know why they did it like this, but... They had all the game tables and they were all around the booths uh for the vendors so like in the middle were all the vendors and all the tables were around and it like made the seating very limited so oh, that's bizarre yeah yeah like huh. the uh ultimate masters draft and it took like half an hour just for us to get seating even though like everyone was kind of around still so that was yeah interesting yeah. that's bizarre <laughs> yeah. man yeah. yeah uh did you win anything cool or did they do the whole prize wall and all that yeah they did the prize wall uh i waited till sunday to get my stuff like everyone else does and then sure <laughs> picking, basically uh i wanted uh, the box toppers because i heard like they do that for the prize wall but they only did that for friday and then they said they ran out so they're trying to like spread them out across the year since uma is going to be like limited they are going to do them i think like you know 50 the first day and that's it or something like that so Nice. Yeah. Um, and, and I also have, uh, th this isn't uh, in the morning, like last time I was drinking, it's not a beer for breakfast, but it's about, it's five o'clock uh, where, where Brandon and I are in our time zone. Uh, so I brought with me a special guest. I have the Peace Pipe Porter. It's got cocoa nibs in it from Worthy Brewing down from Bend, Oregon. I mean, there's so many, since moving to the Pacific Northwest, man, I don't know if you're a beer guy, but it's just like beer mecca up here. <laughs> Whether it's if, usually I'm drinking Washington uh, beer or wine, or you know Oregon's got some great stuff too. But yeah, it's it's cold outside, so I, I'm keeping up with the porters. Um, you have a special guest with you, Brandon. I have um, what I have every morning actually. Almost is a rock star. I've added a little raspberry vodka because it's all we had, and actually it's quite delicious. So <laughs> nice. Well, yeah. well, cheers, sir. Cheers to you. <laughs> All right, yeah, th those uh, those rock stars really did me in, man. I, I used to be a, a pretty svelte, you know, one seventy five, and then I was like, like two of those. I, I know this is gross, like two of those blue monsters, like oh, yeah, a yeah. day. Woo! Oh killed, yeah, killed the metabolism. <laughs> See what's nice about this is it's only ten calories because it's the recovery, and it doesn't have that nasty rock star taste. It just tastes like lemonade. So. Nice. I like it so much. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of what I'm drinking. If Aww. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's got some porters tend to get that uh like that burnt tire taste to it. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Uh and this one has a little bit of that. Um I'm going to I'm going to power through it because, you know, why waste? Uh, yeah, true. Not do that. So, yeah, uh without further ado, sir, what is your magic origin story? All right. So, I was trying to remember what came first if I just bought the cards first or if I was introduced it by someone, but I'm pretty sure what happened was I went to a local comic shop and my mom gave me like $20, like, Hey, here you go. Buy yourself a comic or something. And I go in there and the people running out were talking about magic, the gathering and they had starter decks from revised. And I was like 11 years old. And I was like, Oh, okay. That sounds cool. So I bought two of them at like $10 each. And I told my mom, she's like, yeah, you weren't supposed to spend the whole $20. So <laughs> I remember I, and that I got a crusade. And I was like, what is this card? This looks awesome. Gives all your creatures plus one plus one and everything. Or is it white creatures? I can't remember. Yeah. 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 White cre white creatures, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? I'm pretty sure. Sure. Yeah, because yeah, cause bad cause bad moon was the black creature. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So that's like where I got my first taste. And I remember in junior high, some people played it and I had my cards, but I didn't really know how to play. So my deck was all my cards just stacked together, basically. And <laughs> Like, you know, as we do, right? Yeah. Just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't really know the rules. Let's just, I'll go by what this guy's saying because I'm sure he knows the rules better than me. And yeah, that's pretty much how it started. I mainly just collected the cards. And then, like everyone else, stopped after a while. I think around Ice Age kind of killed it for me. So I wasn't too long because just so many, so much text on the cards. I was like, I don't know what any of these cards do. And then around Ravnica, my friends uh, who I knew, I found out they play magic and then I got back in then then I took another little break and then I really got back in around scars and uh, Zendikar and that's like when I started like drafting everything so that's when I really got back into it yeah it's I mean you're you're like it's like the hokey pokey right yeah. you, you always put one toe in uh you're, you're in there for a while you know thousands of dollars gone and then you you rip the toe out and, you know for a while you're like I'm done with this thing yeah. and then they release a great set and it it always gets us back in yeah right <laughs> So yeah, I mean, revise. So you've probably been uh, so you've been playing probably a little bit longer than I have. Um, I started when Ice Age, which I've said on the show okay. before. But I remember, like we, you know, we had a math club, and I, looking back at it, it's just so crazy because the math teacher that was running this math club had a blue deck that was all power nine. And so oh, he would just let the students play. He's just like, yeah, here you go. You know, you split it in half. You do half this, half this. I was playing with Lotuses and Moxen and Time Walks. Like, who cares? Uh, and I don't even think he knew what he had because they were all penny sleeved. Yeah, and they also uh, weren't as much back then. I mean. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's it's just crazy. Do you remember, like, when you were cracking those packs or those those early revised packs, you said, like, uh, Crusade. But in the, in the early period when you were playing, uh, or collecting, do you remember any like hu huge money cards that now you look back, you're like, oh crap, I had one of those. Uh, yeah, there's one where uh, the guy who taught me like the basics of magic, whatever, uh, who at my middle school, I remember I had an underground C and he's like, oh, I need one of these. And I was like, oh, you can just have it because I don't even play two colors. Oh. <laughs> so I just gave it to him. Yeah. And uh, that was, and I didn't even like the guy that much. He was ah. like, yeah, right. <laughs> so that's why it's always stuck in my mind. But yeah, uh, cracking packs, not so much because like even back then, you never really knew like the rarity. You had to look on, up like an inquest or something like that to figure out like, oh, sure. this card's worth this much money and stuff. But I remember uh, at the comic shop, they'd have the singles and I always wanted Leviathan because, you know, freaking giant Leviathan. creature. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> not a good card, but it's just the power and toughness that you see that and you're like, I have to have this. It's amazing. Sure. Yeah. And, and polar cracking too, right? That poor yeah. polar bear in the art. Uh, right. Just broke my heart um yeah leviathan there there was that big uh in, in fallen empires too is that giant uh lobster too oh I, okay oh what was that called something i'll, I'll deep sea is it or maybe maybe, maybe. yeah I remember yeah I like force yeah. of nature back in the day it, it fooled yeah. all of us right exactly. we're like yes. <laughs> It I mean, has to be good. Even Benny Smith, uh, he said, or he traded his uh, uh, Mox Pearl for like a Sarah Angel. You oh. know, it's like, God. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. feel that in the morning. Well, I mean, Sarah Angel was like the face of magic back then. So, of course, sure. you wanted that. Yeah. And it was a good card. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was like Lord of the Pit, uh, uh, Shiv and Dragon. And yeah. it's just like, yeah, th those were the cards. And then Counterspell. And it was like, ooh, blue sucks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, we're wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nothing's changed. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So how much how much magic are you playing now on like a day to day or week to week basis? And <laughs> what is your favorite format? It's week to week, and it's uh, about once a week because I go Friday night to my local shop. It's like 30 minutes away. Uh, Arcane Lab, shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, uh, and that's only if they have a draft going on, because I'll go and sometimes draft just won't fire. Like for Guilds of Ravnica, it just never fired. I think I got to draft it once. Are you serious? Yeah, so it's, wow. it's been slowing down. It's like a, it's a college town, so you know, depends on if it's a winter break or something like that, if people are gone or something like that. And of course money, because you know, drafts do cost money. Sure. But yeah, I, I did get to draft a lot of uh, Ultimate Masters there, which was nice. So yeah, about once a weekend, of course, Limited is my favorite. I think I prefer Sealed over a draft, but I still love them both. So. I agree. How, how, did you, how many Sealeds uh, or pre-releases did you get to get in with Guilds? With Guilds, I think I did two, because how our shop usually does it is uh, one Friday, Two Saturday and then a two headed giant on Sunday. And I think I just might have done midnight and then one on Saturday. In my LGS, it's kind of a bigger one. Oh, uh, Geek Fortress up in Snow Home is great stuff. Oh, like okay. uh, TJ Roger, uh, TJ Rogers plays there and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. It's, it's a ton of fun and, and it's such a huge turnout. It's like the polar opposite. And, you know, of course, like, like beer and wine, like I said, magic is kind of spawned from here. So, you know, you, you could throw a rock and go to an LGS, which is. Yeah great problem to have um and, and the pre-release was just so massive that we didn't really get to choose our guilds i wound up with the one i wanted i, I got to mirror uh which which guilds did you uh get to get to draft during yeah the, or did, during the sealed i did demir both times because uh of my preview card so it was demir so i was like i got i gotta represent you know <laughs> dude that guild mage i killed with that you yeah, i killed with your preview card <laughs> it was an amazing card i was like wow this is really good thank you wizards <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that was, I, I mean, now that we've, I think we've gotten all of the, the guild majors spoiled, uh, while, oh, you know, yeah. by the time it's recorded, I, I think they've spoiled all of the, uh, the allegiance guild mages. And I think still like now that you have the 10, I, I think yours is still, still the, the best one. Yeah. I saw, I saw the Azorus one. And I was like, Ooh, wait, wait, was that the one that wasn't, it was like tap a creature that's four greater. No, that was the Orzov one. The Orzov, yeah, that wasn't very good. No, yeah. no of course, my yeah. my guild. That's your <laughs> <laughs> no, the Azorius one I think is pretty sweet, is uh, okay. if I remember correctly. But yeah, so, some of them are, are very similar. Like the, uh, I think it's the the Orzov one and the Rakdos one just kind of deal damage. Uh, oh, okay. To planeswalkers or, or creatures, you know, the, the game has to end. You know, when you have bo uh, board stalls and stuff like that, maybe it will turn out well. But I mean. When, when they spoiled like just a mirror in general with, with the with the mechanic, yeah, uh, the mechanic was very cool. Oh my god, I, I'm surprised that that hasn't kind of taken over a little bit more and constructed. Yeah, I'm surprised. It's also like one of those where you're like, I'm surprised they haven't done this before. Like, there's always a, a new yeah. mechanic that you're like, why haven't they done this before? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, some of the ones that you know, this kind of early talk about the new set, but. I mean, th this set, I, for some reason, it, it is just going over like gangbusters. People, there is a buzz in the air right now about Ravnica Allegiance. Um, I think all five guilds have phenomenal uh, uh, mechanics this time around. Maybe Simic oh, is a little questionable. Did you get a chance yeah. to look at many spoilers yet? Yeah, I, I checked them out. I think it was uh, yesterday, the day before I, I caught up on them then. And yeah, Simic is like... It's very simic, and it's also very like we've done this. We've definitely done this one before, right? Yeah, it's kind of ho hum. Um, yeah. So, w what in the in a major way has, has Magic the Gathering affected your life in a positive way? Um, just the friends I've made. I mean, like me, like playing this game, and then meeting so many like like minded people who are like just they're so nice, and we're all here just to play this game and have fun and usually have similar interests and stuff and just like made some really good friendships through and stuff. You said you were, you were kind of a collector and you were, you were playing kind of casual kitchen table magic at first. Uh, and then to drafting what, at what point were you just like, Hey, I love this game so much. I think I could be pretty good at it on camera. And <laughs> what was the, the Genesis and I guess the origin story of booster tutor. All right. Well, you said I'm a collector. I'd say, it, and my wife would probably say it too. I'm more of a hoarder. <laughs> I never got rid of my old cards. Like nice. I, I still have all the like revised commons on commons for some reason. Like, but yeah, like I did that. And then I got into drafting around like a little bit around uh Zendikar. 
because I got into pre-releases. Like that was what got me. I was like, this is sealed. And I was like, oh, this is like fun. It's like nice just having this like little staff of cards and you have to make a deck around. It. And I love like just getting something and like, hey, make something out of this. Like, and I would do well at the pre-releases, like after like, you know, playing a few and stuff. And then I got into draft and I just was doing well at drafts. And eventually I was like, Hey, I could, I, I kind of want to do like a podcast, kind of like how limited resources had their podcasts and stuff. So I asked my friend and I was like, Hey, do you want to like do a podcast with me? And he kind of blew me off. Like oh. he never really answered the question. I was like, Oh, okay. I guess I'll just do something by myself then. Look and, who's laughing now. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so I just did something by myself because I just wanted to talk about magic and I like, my friends are more casual into magic. Like my, my, the ones I hang out daily, like, or, you know, semi daily. So I can't really talk about like the new spoilers and stuff with them. Cause you know, they're like, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But I, so I just want to discuss about magic more. So I just made this channel and did that. And I was like, I'm okay. at draft. I might as well just try and help out people. Cause like, if I went to a GP or something and played against someone, I would, if I, you know, played against them and I saw like something like, oh, you could have done this or trying to help them a little bit, even if they beat me. Like, uh, like I know that sounds like bad. You're like, oh, you just beat me. Uh, I'm going to try and help you out. Like, but yeah, just helping out people, try and get the idea of the game better and stuff. So, so the channel contains uh, random buys, top tens, pre-release guides, giveaways, pack openings, uh, and a lot more. What are your favorite types of videos that you make? Um, my favorite was the podcast. Just because I was super proud of that, like the work that went into it and stuff, and uh, you know the talking of magic, which is what I love doing. The random buys, I know they're my like most popular thing, and I love like looking through old collection stuff. But yeah, they're a lot of editing, <laughs> <laughs> so I love doing them. But they're also just there's so much work. And then I also like doing the um, like pre-release guys, just because, like I said, helps people out. Like I think, like hey, I think this is a good idea. Try and use these cards and stuff. So I like giving people like a little one up on their pre-release if they can. Yeah, uh, the, the, those guides were fantastic. Uh, for for Guilds of Ravnica, I oh. was just uh, rewatching them to in prep for this, and I'm just like, man, I, I hope he does this more. Uh, I know those are like a lot of other YouTube channels or podcasts. Uh, you know, they jokingly or sometimes not even jokingly go, oh, it's time for our you know set review video because there's just, it's just so much, right? Yeah, like, it's a lot to talk about everything. But I, I of course, you know, I, I love those the most. Uh, limited resources, like that's their most popular episodes even right. though they're like three or four hours long they're like the most popular so like whenever i wanted to do the set review i wanted to try and condense it because i didn't want to have like a half hour where i talk about every single card because you know i like to keep my videos shortish like at least below a half hour like for random bias around 20 minutes consumable yeah. yeah exactly and so but the problem is i always like there's a lot of editing for them because i had like the pictures and i gotta do this and that and then i always like do it like a few days before the pre-release. So no one really watches them, sadly. So I'm going to at this time try and get them out earlier. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, so hey, you just broke the news. So there yeah. will be one for Allegiance, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Already did nice. the intros and everything. So <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, bless your heart for doing the, the speed ups. Uh, on oh, some yeah. I, that's the one thing with Random Buys. Like, I have to do this because it's so boring to watch just commons and commons and commons. <laughs> I, I, I see someone like me that that has like you know if I'm on a plane or something and I have some time to kill I want I want the the unedited you know director's cut version of that yeah. I'm sure you're you're editing some of your like funny like commentary yeah that's the thing a lot of time I'm just edit like I'll edit to the point where I talk and if it's something like oh that's a funny thing I said maybe I'll keep it but if not I'm just like yeah just go by <laughs> <laughs> and in 2018 like you said before you, you did get a, a preview card you actually got two. I mean, what you've been doing this channel for for a little bit now. What did that mean to you to get two preview cards? That meant a ton. Like that was like, oh hey, I'm recognized by Watsi, basically. Like that's awesome. That's like was my main goal. Like in 2018, I said, like in January, hey, I'm gonna try and get a preview card. That's my that's my resolution. And I think that January, I like uh, emailed uh, Blake, the PR guy, like, hey, couldn't. I get a preview card for my channel, blah, blah, blah. Like never really heard back. And then finally when like, when Ravnica was about to get, come out, I uh, messaged him on Twitter and he's like, oh yeah, I'm happy down. I was like, oh, okay, thank you very much. I didn't even know. So yeah. yeah. And then like I got him and I was like, okay, I have to do like something special for these. So I had to, that's why I made the skits and everything. I just wanted to try and make it fun, light and entertaining basically. 
Yeah, and, and you completely succeeded. So Thank you. Thank yeah, you. it was it was it was awesome. Um, like uh, it, it's funny too because we we talked about the random buys. Of course, that's my favorite. Um, and I hope it doesn't get to the point where you're like uh, like Brian, you know, the professor, where his most famous videos or most popular videos are the uh, the booster box game, and he just like it's like nails on a chalkboard to him <laughs> that he has to do those, but he's just like, this is what people want, so I yeah. got to do it. Like here we go again. Let's play. The booster box game. The booster box game. Oh no! The booster box game. The booster box game. Ah! The game. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> I, but these random buys are just awesome. And sometimes, uh, like the, <laughs> I, like the 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 weirder ones, uh, the better for me because I think they're <laughs> so entertaining. Like that one where it was like super grimy. You said like the the people had like American pickers. Yeah. On the TV. <laughs> Do you have do you have any like behind the scenes that uh, stories that you didn't share within the video or any elaboration on on some of those kind of sketchy interactions? Uh, pretty much when I like I tell the stories, I tell like the story. But there is one where um, it wasn't. I never made it a video because it's basically on um, what was it the Let Go app? I found these cards. I was like, okay, I'll go check them out. Went to the to the house. It's a pretty nice house and everything. Uh, I don't think I ever shared this one on the on the video. Went to the house and the guy opened the door and it was just like, like just things everywhere, clothes like scattered about the ground and like there was a little kid there and he's like, oh hey, we're moving soon. Like that's what the little kid said. I, like the dad never said that. <laughs> I'm like okay, and there's just like boxes everywhere and stuff. So I'm like okay, I guess they're moving. He's but, just like talk to the kid. <laughs> yeah, basically it was weird. And then I was like, okay, I'm here for the magic cards. Like oh yeah, sure, 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 sure. So I'm looking through them. And I was like, I, I recognize some cards. And I was like, wait a minute, this, I, I think I heard something about this. So uh, one of my friends at the shop uh, had texted me like a month before saying his friend's collection had got stolen. And he had uh, a collection no. of the the curses. Like that's what his main thing was. He wanted, he like, I think it was like foil curses. Sure. And on the front page was those curses. So I was like, oh crap, this is his stuff. So I offered the guy like a hundred dollars, you know, I think he wanted like 150. He was like, yeah, sure. I was like, okay, well I could have got it for less. <laughs> That's always the thing. It's like when they like snap, say yes. And I'm like, oh man, but <laughs> I had a hack right 20. There. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I got those for him and then I contacted him and just gave them back to him. So. Oh uh, yeah, I, I do remember that. But you did post that video, and oh, I did. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, did, was there any? I don't know. I don't even know if I could ask that. But is there? Was there any like kind of follow up as far as like law enforcement them, goes? Or? I told him the address and everything, and uh, they. I don't think he ever did anything with it. So I think maybe he said the guy had gone away. Like they they went and checked it out, and he had moved away. So. Yeah. Yeah. You just left a kid there. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I live here now. Yeah. He's smoking a cigar like baby Bowie. Like, right. yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, it, it, that one that I was referencing earlier, uh, with the, I call it the American Picker episode. Uh, how did, like, I, I don't know. I, I've smelled things in garages before. And while you were going through them, you were, you just were noticeably just detested. Like, how disgusting and grimy were those cards? Uh, they were bad. It's like they were like a block stuck together. Like he said, they'd been there for like years. Like they mm. were his sons or something. And yeah, the mold and stuff. I think ah. I, I think I actually eventually threw out the, the the little plastic case they're in because it was just. I'm like, there's nothing in here. Why am I keeping this? Like I said, I'm a porter. <laughs> <laughs> but what, yeah, what, it, it was so bad. <laughs> was, that, was that the the kind of most disgusting? collection that you bought yeah that was definitely the most disgusting i know like at my shop they had one where uh i guess there was a house fire and oh, all wow. the cards were like like had smoke damage and stuff I and mean, there was like a scrub land in there and stuff so Ooh. <laughs> yeah did you keep that at least or? no no that wasn't for me he, uh the oh. shop owner got it for like 20 bucks i think or something like that so yeah, that was nice. sleeve playable that's what we say hey at least they're like sleeve playable so yeah yeah might be a little dusty but <laughs> might be a little moldy but <laughs> <laughs> So you alluded to earlier that your your favorite video that you've produced, or well, your favorite type of video that you produced was the was the podcast, um, which you co-host with uh, Jay, and that podcast is called Cumulative Upkeep. I, I will always forever have a, a problem saying that word. Don't worry, we we did too. We don't know why we named it that. <laughs> <laughs> so is is that I, I saw I see that the show hasn't come out in a while. Is that show on hiatus, or what's the the future of that show? Yeah, it's on hiatus. Uh, not quite sure on the future, but like. Jay moved to the East Coast 
and she was like in between places because she's still moving farther east so it's hard to like you know get times and everything and then like we were going to do a holiday episode like a, a like reunion episode during christmas time but my job was just killing me right then and i had like the crack attacks and everything so i didn't have time to do that so hopefully in the future but yeah i love doing that but it also it took a lot of time to edit that because it was like you're editing video and you got to cut out all the like ums and like silences and like whenever you just like hey this is really boring we just talked about let's cut that whole thing and, <laughs> and like we would do it where like i record my video she record her video she would have to send me like a seven gigabyte file and that would take forever oh geez yeah and you did it right that, yeah <laughs> yeah that's the thing we did, we did it like that but also like it just it we would make a video on like sunday it would come out to like wednesday or thursday and by then the news is all old because we did like the weekly news and stuff like that and yeah so it was a lot of fun it was just a lot of work is that something that you'd be, if not that particular uh, show anymore, is that something that you'd be in the market for is, is kind of linking up with someone doing uh, another magic podcast? I, I would have to find like uh, uh, like a co-host I like, you know, yeah. snapped with like I did with Jay and stuff like that. Nice. Nice. Well, hey, anyone out there, you know, community <laughs> members, this guy's yeah, yeah. free agent. No, <laughs> she, she, was, she was just a, a fan of the show who like contacted me and everything. So she's cool, man. Yeah, yeah she, she's absolutely fantastic. I love those episodes. Uh, I interact with her on Twitter too. She, she's great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. she's like super knowledgeable and everything. Like, oh my gosh, this, she knows her stuff. Like she knows more than me, especially about Commander. She was like amazing with that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, who who are your biggest influences as far as YouTube goes? Uh, and and we could say, you know, magic or non magic. Well, first off, let's let's just mention it right now. I think you and I both have our favorite non magic uh, YouTube <laughs> channel. I, I think it's the same one. Oh God! Oh God! Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! He's back! <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! Oh, oh my God! Oh. oh my god yeah yeah it's red letter media those guys. oh my god oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, those guys are amazing like how did you how did you start listening to them or uh cr you, you, actually it's kind of funny I, I used to religiously watch uh because you know I, I love the movies and all that so I, I used to watch chris stuckman and uh the schmoes all the time um when they would do like the schmoes no show and i remember there was a feud uh because w when they started w when red letter media started the the nerd uh what is it called? oh man I'm that's how i started the the, the oh, nerd crew new nerd crew thank yeah. you yeah they they were obviously uh talking trash about jedi council that's on collider uh, oh is that what it was okay yeah. <laughs> i so, thought it was just any podcast because a lot of them are like that oh yeah no it's all yeah. like it, it's it's so funny because now you know even if you don't like uh star wars or anything go watch a couple episodes of jedi council and it will make so much sense oh, <laughs> uh, it's it's like ripped right off of it and so they were they were mentioning that um and chris duckman ha had a feud too uh with with jay bomb and uh so i so i went over there and i and i watched a couple plinket reviews and i'm like these are really funny but then like just I just stayed and I went into a real deep rabbit hole and I came out like days later with like a Neil Breen <laughs> tattoo and <laughs> right. <Man>. yeah, <laughs> it's just, they're, they're all just, the it's them and like everyone else. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I started like, I, I would listen to a podcast called uh film slash. Okay. Yeah. 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 And they were talking about the nerd crew and how like, it just like, totally that's how all like all those podcasts are and everything and they felt like they're making fun of them sort of yeah. uh, so <laughs> yeah. i was like okay i gotta check this out and i checked out the first episode like oh these guys are hilarious yeah very and then cool. i got under best cool. the worst and yeah. yeah oh best of the do you watch the one with macaulay culkin oh ah okay <laughs> the the celebrity ones are always hard for me to watch okay because they're just okay. like the energy is always like a little bit off macaulay culkin was cool and everything but he was also right. super hyper so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh well I, I like the his debut is was was the Halloween best of the worst where they just made him sit back and be the scarecrow while they just got drunk. Uh that was wait, cool. was that Macaulay Culkin back there? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> This is what I'm saying. Like, who what? else can do this? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're gonna be on on my little YouTube show, but you're gonna, you know, movie star man, but you're gonna sit back and pretend you're a scarecrow. We'll that just... sounds like uh South Park, what they did with uh, George Clooney when he was just the voice of the dog. You're yeah. Like, why? What was the point of this? Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, they that's came. awesome. Yeah. Uh okay. hey, uh Rich Evans was just on Ellen, right? Yeah, right. That was so weird. Oh my 
my god. Uh, yeah. So, so we'll we'll scale it back to Magic a little bit. Oh. Who who was your? Who were you watching around that time before you you jumped into to content creation? And, and did, were you influenced by anyone, or were you just kind of started the channel and then kind of started watching other content? A uh, little confession: I don't really watch YouTube that much. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I basically just watch Red Letter Media. And the professor was the biggest influence. I okay. have to say, like, most people, he's like the biggest influence. He just, you know, his personality. He's in front of that camera. He knows what he's talking about, and he just makes everything so positive and stuff. Like, how can you not have him be an influence for you, basically? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, another huge red letter red letter media fan. Yeah, exactly. When I thought that, I was like, oh man, come and Star Trek too. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. He even had the for Halloween last year. He got the uh, lightning fast VCR repair. Uh, that's shirt. right. I did, yeah, that's right. I was like, oh man, it's awesome. So you've been uploading channels since, and correct me if I'm wrong, since 2015. I think that's yeah. I think I started 2015, but then like I, I think I took a little break and then started really up in like 2016 around there. Sure. Yeah, don't go back and watch that first video. That is, my <laughs> wife makes fun of me all the time for that. With how like I tried to like use a script. And it does not come off genuine. It was really bad. And yeah, she always makes fun of me for that. She's like, that's not your first video. I'm like, do we really have to? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you shouldn't have said it because now insert clip here. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Brandon here. This weekend was the Battle for Zendikar pre-release. I hope you all had fun. I know I did. Played about 20 hours of magic and I'm pretty good for a week. Anyway, now it's all over. It's time for the best part of magic. Opening up booster packs. Anyway, <laughs> that's the anyway. <laughs> yeah. Since you've been making videos, how has been the support from other community members or interactions? You say you don't have a lot of time, and I totally get that, man. I besides RLM, uh, I don't have a ton of time to to watch a lot of uh, content creators too. But just being involved in the community, how has the interactions been? Like with other YouTubers? Yeah. Or MTG? Yeah. Uh, I don't really interact with that many people, which is probably more my fault than anything. Like, I don't really put myself out there, which I should. But, like, I think I met uh, the professor once at a GP in, like, San Jose, and I got a picture with him, and he was like, hey, I meant to talk to you. I was like, holy crap, you know who I am? That's awesome. And, yeah, that was about the closest interaction I've had with anyone except, uh, like, fans, really. So That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, Seeing the fans is always awesome. That's always surprises me when people, like, want to selfie with me. I'm like, okay. I don't know why you want that, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's, my, that's my imposter syndrome. Like, sure, I have that's <laughs> all the good ones do, man. Yeah. Um, and, and you're just like a hair shy of, of twenty thousand subs. So, I mean, that's that's huge, especially not with a ton of other you know community interaction. You're just doing your thing, making great content. Uh, for someone that's just starting out or a up and comer, what would be you know for someone that's kind of made it to to the point that you've made it? What would be your advice? Uh, my advice is put yourself in front of the camera. That's always my thing. Like nobody, if you're doing pack openings, which I think is fine. Like if you want to do pack openings, do pack openings. I know it's frowned upon by some people uh, as like easy content, but at least like put yourself in front of the camera. So people like have a face to like, Hey, this is this guy's channel or this person's channel and not just a bunch of hands talking and opening packs. Um, use whatever camera you have. Like if you just have your phone, that's sometimes fine. Like I use my phone for, if I do like a pre-release or if I was at the GP, if I did any videos, the phone and it looks fine. Uh, get, get some lights. Cause those help a ton. I was surprised how much those like make your vid your videos look so much better. And, and, it's, a, and it's a cheap thing too. Yeah, right? exactly. Keep considering. It's like, yeah. It's like 50 bucks. And you get like these two big lights that will last for years and, um, try and get, some good audio because if people hear bad audio they will a lot of times just turn off the video so maybe get like um i think jay had like a 20 dollar thing she just plugged into her her iphone and it worked fine like it was amazing nice. and then just find something you're passionate about i know that's like super like standard to say like oh you know chase your passion and people will follow you but yeah find something like, like you're good at something you're excited about because the excitement and the enthusiasm like bleeds out and people will enjoy watching your videos and stuff. Absolutely. And, and I mean, I would only piggyback on this. This is your question, but I would just say completely just be yourself. Like oh, yeah. no one's going to be a better Brandon crane than Brandon crane. Like no one's got that smile and, and that thumbs up, you know, it's just like, you, you gotta, you gotta just be you because 
you know, there's no one out there that's a better John. Um, even though I'm just a John, uh, <laughs> but but you know, don't don't try to. It, it's great to have influences, uh, of course, and, and to have influences bleed out into your videos. But always kind of stay true to you and your message, uh, if I may be so bold to piggyback on your stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, also, say, people I hear a lot are like, hey, um, the professor does reviews, so I don't want to do reviews. Like, no, do reviews. Like, there should be more people doing different, like, the same thing. Like, just don't try, don't steal someone's entire thing. Like, if you want to do random buys, like, hey, do random buys. But, like, you know, call them something else if you want. But, yeah, just if you find a collection. Do collection. I, I'm not going to care. That's cool. Absolutely. What What is the future goals for Booster Tutor? Oh, um, like I met my main goal, which was to get a preview card. That was like the main thing I want to do. So I've been thinking of expanding maybe a little bit. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, maybe do like board games and stuff. So because I, I have a ton and <laughs> <laughs> I need to do something with them. <laughs> Those aren't just empty boxes for the set. Yeah, no, no, sadly. <laughs> That's to my wife's chagrin. Just, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've also wanted to do like top 10 list of like things that aren't usually top 10 lists in magic. So hmm. like one of mine uh, I want to do that I'm working on, I've been working on, I just haven't got it done is a uh, top 10 fastest banned cards. Like that's not a top 10 I've ever seen. So I'd like to do something like that. Or EDH decks, which I like to make uh, commander decks that are more of a theme so uh like one of them i have is just randomness so it's like the i forget his name now the black red guy who randomly does damage oh gosh yeah yeah. yeah but like that where it's just a bunch of cards where you roll dice and flip coins and stuff like that so you're just, that guy yeah yeah well <laughs> I, yeah like I, I like to just make a theme and then like i don't care if the deck's good or not it's just here's a sure. fun theme or something so God, stuff like that isn't edh great like, yes it yes i honestly I used to hate it. <laughs> oh, me, no, me too. Yeah. 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 I would be like, oh, I'm just here with my standard deck. Like, what are you guys doing with your big old stupid stack? And now I'm like, EDH is the best. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it was it was so boring to me because people would just take forever on their turns. I'm just, like, sitting over here like, I guess I'll just look at my phone. In fact, I made a deck because uh, in one of my Before My Dead random buys, oh, there's a story I could tell. I've ever told the story of the tabernacle. I don't think so. Now, okay. now that it rings a bell. Okay. <laughs> I got I got to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Dad jokes. <laughs> uh, uh, in Alameda, they used to have this uh, like outside thing called, what was it called? The Alameda Toy Shop or Toy Show. And one time person said they were having magic cards. So I was like, oh, sweet. I'll go check it out. And they had boxes and boxes and boxes of magic cards. Um, they said that they were, I think, their old roommate or somebody they lived with left all the cards. It's like it's like that car story of like my husband divorced or ran away and told me to sell the car and send them money. And he told them like sell all my cards, and here's the ones I know are worth a value, and then just send me the money and you can keep like half of it or something. So they say, oh yeah, we took all the dual lands and stuff. We sold them the card kingdom. So I was like, okay, so I'll look through this. So I'm looking through it, and all of a sudden, uh, this is like years ago. So I find a. Uh, uh, vindicates. I'm like, ooh. So those were like twenty five dollars back then. Sure. So like, okay. So I have to look through this whole thing. <laughs> it's like eighteen, like five row boxes of cards. So I'm going through it, and eventually I come across a tabernacle, but Italian. And I was like, but the thing was like, I didn't really know what tabernacle was because like, you know, I had it was in Italian. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is tabernacle, and they were selling all the rares for like. I think it was a quarter each. Oh my so, God. <laughs> yeah. So I got that and a stack of cards for like 60 bucks. And yeah, it was amazing. I used, I, I had, I kept it cause I wanted to make a, a deck with it where it was a commander deck where everyone's things cost more. Hmm. So it was like everything, like all your spells cost plus one more and all my spells cost like plus or uh, minus two more and stuff just to make the games go longer. Cause I was that spiteful about commander. <laughs> <laughs> You want to play this, and we're going to be here all night. Yeah, exactly. That's a, <laughs> now you know how I feel. So. Is that a was that a Grand Arbiter or something? Yeah, it's Grand Arbiter. Oh, actually, it was Grand Arbiter was in it, but it was uh, the Esper Commander because I needed three colors because I uh, was proxying. Um, oh, what's the one now? The Abyss. Is it oh, the Abyss? Geez. Yeah, 
I, I didn't have the abyss. I was thinking about buying it. I was like, but then I was like, I don't know about. I'll, I'll proxy it first and see how this deck works. Yeah, and of Dude, course, everyone hated. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you just got a tabernacle for what, like a dollar, yeah. and you're complaining about abyss now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it wasn't a dollar. That's the thing. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's insane, man. Yeah. yeah. Who's your favorite commander now? Um, ooh, I'm trying to think. Or how many decks do you have? I don't have that many. I, you know what? You know, it's like the most. Uh, Atraxa. I mean, I, ooh, she's yikes. the worst. And yeah, she's. I I still love that card though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's brutal, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have an Atraxa deck. I have a Werewolf deck. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's dumb. It's not good, but I have a werewolf deck, and I have a uh, tree folk deck. Nice. Yeah, All right. So, yeah. Little tree beard action. Huh? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, it's it's that time of the episode where we. This is a well the second time that we've done this. This is the patron question. So thank oh, you okay. so much uh, to to the patrons for this very channel and it supports this show. And if you get you know if you want to become a patron and you get to do cool stuff like this, uh, your name's in the credits and you get to ask the guests uh, essentially or you know have your question read to the guests. Uh, so for Brandon, I had Eric Williamson. Again, thank you so much, sir for being a patron. Uh, he says, my question is a multi-part. Uh, with the recent rebranding of GP events to Magic Fest and increases the payouts at the events, do you feel that this could be the push needed to regain and increase turnout numbers at events? Or do you feel that the increasing popularity of Arena may bring the numbers even lower? Would you support a flat fee for attending patrons who are not entering events but are attending for social casual reasons, EDH, meeting cosplayers, etc. So coming fresh off of uh, GP Oakland, this, this seems pretty tailor-made for you. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Do you want to talk about the finals of GP Oakland? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. That that was interesting, I'll say. And I'd say like that definitely wasn't a good look for the GPs no. or the Magic Fest, I should say. Right. So um, hmm. I feel like I don't think Arena is going to cut into like the Magic Fest attendance. I think if anything, it's going to like, hey, I play this game online. There's one like an hour away from me. I'm going to go check this out in live and like see how it is and everything. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. Uh, what was the first part of the question? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think it increased pay. Uh, let's see. Rebranding, uh, feel that it could be pushed. I think he meant like uh, raise the the attendance amount, so it would support. Uh, oh, would you support a flat fee for attendance? Oh yeah, that's yeah. You know what? I I think I would because conventions like for comic stuff, they already have flat fees and they're like sure. a ton of money. I mean, even if like GPS did like five dollars or something, that would help out with things like say artists, you know, helping yeah. the money to them or something like that because. I mean, the fact that it's just free to go to it is kind of crazy. Like, yeah. that's, it's awesome that it is, but also, like, you could probably charge, like, $5 or something just to even do, like, $5, you're good for the weekend. Like, how much yeah. money would that raise? I mean, that might look like people... I'm sure people wouldn't like it that if uh, Channel 5 Vault did that because that might look a little weird. Like, oh, they got the monopoly on it, now they're charging for it. Sure. So, the little damned if you, damned if you don't type of thing there. But for like a spectator fee, like I, I think maybe if you're if you're enrolled in the in the main, maybe you don't have to pay oh, yeah, yeah, extra yeah. for it. But but yeah, if you're just like uh, you know, I, I go to GPs not to not to play in the main, but for the experience, especially now since the switch over to Magic Fest, uh, that's what it's supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about hanging out with cosplayers and and meeting your artists. Um, and you know all these it's it's a big to do now it is more like a san diego comic con than a magic tournament and if that's what uh we're trying to gear it towards then yeah absolutely yeah. I, I mean i, I pay 10. <laughs> yeah I, like uh like i think the days of because it, you just go there and play but now there's all this like other stuff you can do there i think charging is fine and yeah definitely if you pay for the main event get in for free or something or have get a package or something like that you know Absolutely. All right. Uh, uh, now we're going to spin it all over to the game. We're going to go face the D20, Brandon. Do you have a spin down? Yes, I do. All right. Let's do this. Let's Come do on. this. Oh. 16. 16. Um, what? Wow. This one came up again. Uh, what is the first thing on your bucket list? Uh, yes, like Jeremy. Uh, I would like to travel more. Like I... I, I so you do watch the show. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to go to Japan. Just because, you know, it's Japan. 
I would like to see that. But uh, New Zealand. Nice. And that's because my wife and I are giant Lord of the Rings fans. She way more than me, but she would love to like visit the set and everything and probably just live live in a hobbit hole, basically. So <laughs> that's on my bucket list. Go to New Zealand. Just look at all the Lord of the Rings stuff like everyone else that goes there, basically. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a another guest uh, for, from the show, uh, Jordan from Orcs Head Magic. He moved from, from England to New Zealand. And, and from everything I, I've seen, he just loves it. Because I think it's it's quite a bit less uh, cost of living wise. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, not to knock on New Zealand, but I don't think there's that much there. Like, <laughs> Sure, except, you know. Picturesque, picturesque scenery. Yeah, exactly. Except for the beauty of it all. Of and hobbits. Of Mother Nature. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that, yeah, that's awesome. Um, you want to roll again? Yeah, of course. Let's do, do it. it. Seven. Lucky seven. Lucky seven. Oh, uh-oh. Uh, I know you're not much of a drinker, sir, but this yes. is going to uh, ask you your most embarrassing inebriated story. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, okay here i think i think that's probably the most embarrassing is oh, one of my birthdays i went out to a bar on an empty stomach so oh, that's a good idea yeah um took way too many shots in the beginning and i think the one that did me in was my friend bought me a cement mixer because she hates me Ooh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> she on a cement mixer i think it's what like uh bailey's and something else so it curdles in your mouth so yeah. Get, like, yeah really it's gross simple. So I, I drink a ton of shots. Then I'm like, man, I have not eaten all day. I'm super hungry. I'm going to get this bar hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a hot dog at the bar. And I spent the rest of the night in the bathroom. And pretty sure I was just, I was like really dizzy. And then someone came to check on me. Like, you've been here for an hour? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You've been here for an hour. Yeah, yeah, right? So, yeah, I just remember that. I remember uh, stumbling out of the bar with my friends. So, yeah, nice. that's about it. Nothing too crazy, like embarrassing myself, like falling down or anything. But, yeah, just. No, that's for, yeah, that's, yeah. A, oh, man, cement mixers. There's, yeah. like, maybe a rusty nail is worse than that. But I've I'm never not... had that. I've had was the liquid cocaine, which is like a cinnamon one, which is not very good either. This is a family show, Brandon. Roll, oh, roll again, sorry. please. No. Okay. I'll roll again. I'll, let's do another one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Moving along. Uh, 19. That's my lucky number. Um, let's see. What is your, I'm, I don't think we've ever asked this one. What is your culinary triforce? Perfect breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert i know it's not a triforce that's more of a quad force but jeez. Oh, okay uh breakfast um oof. i love me some french toast i know that's boring no good for you anytime i go to like a breakfast place uh i get their french toast to see if they can get it right if they do i'm coming back if you don't uh too bad sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm still coming back <laughs> yeah probably i'll come back and try your breakfast burrito right <laughs> um yeah. lunch ooh. lunch is always like whatever like I don't really care too much, but probably just some good old like hamburger and fries. Like the more homemade it tastes, the better to me. God, I miss In and Out, dude. Ugh. Oh, wait, there's no In and Out up there? No. Oh, I'm sorry. It's oh, rough. Geez. My daughter is addicted to In and Out every night. What are we going for dinner? In and Out. Like, no, we're not having it every night. She's a smart girl. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so good. <laughs> She's uh. not wrong. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I mean, French toast. I mean, for, for lunch, go, go Monte Cristo, man. Oh, God. Yeah. So Jeez. Good. You're trying to kill me? So delicious. <laughs> what about dinner? Uh, dinner sushi. I love sushi. Good. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I'm i not a big fish fan, but for some reason, I love sushi. Like, 100% with you, man. Yeah. Cooked fish, I'm like, oh, no thanks. It tastes gross. But sushi, yep. it's just like, hell yeah. This please. Dude, whenever you're, you got to make it up here, man, because we got some good sushi, and now I got someone to go with. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, uh, you got time for one more. Of course. I'm down. These are fun. Where my dice? There we go. All right, come on, three. Come on. Now fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, well, we already we already covered this, and you already said you kind of don't watch the YouTube's too much. It was your favorite yeah. non-magic YouTuber, I think. Uh, Red Letter Media. Yeah. We got yeah. that. Uh, let's, yeah, let's take a moment. Look at it. 11. 11. Uh, MC. So, I do Arch watch a lot of Giant Bomb. So. Who? Giant Bomb. They're a, a video game oh. uh, podcast like website. So that's another I'll YouTube. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. 
Never heard. Uh, MCU or Star Wars? Uh, right now, MCU. You're stage. like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, Lord of the Rings. Well, I don't know. After The Hobbit, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. It had the Cumberbatch, though. Yeah. Well, so does MCU. Yeah. Yeah. yeah does, does Star Wars yet? I'm sure they'll get him eventually. Star Trek has him. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're a big Star Trek guy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, the movies were fine, the newer ones. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely a Next Generation guy. Nice, nice. You and Zuby, man. Uh, you, you guys could do a Star Trek podcast. Right. Um, yeah, uh, M- I mean, MCU, can they do wrong? And it's so weird because they're just – it's like the same company, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, they never miss. Uh, even, a, even a subpar MCU, like Ant-Man 1 was like, okay, but yeah. I'm still like – better than any than the best dc film dude dc what is going i haven't seen aquaman yet i would like to see it because i hear it's actually fun but did you see it no no it looks like a mess though oh yeah it definitely looks like a mess but so does every uh dc movie <laughs> like i tried to watch uh what was it suicide squad yeah that was all over the place that was i watched the extended version of batman versus superman because everyone said that was better was it no <laughs> Like, I, I guess it explained more, but also I was like, this still isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, so. it's just more of what I don't like. What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. Wonder Woman's like, they're only good one. So hopefully yeah. the next one's good. Yeah. And even thinking about that, it's just like Wonder Woman was enjoyable, but I'm like, is it just better because of what it was compared against? Because I still think it's, it's every MCU film is better. Yeah. That's like, I, I think it was actually good, but I don't know if it was like uh, Marvel good, like up, up there. Like, yeah. Yeah. Ugh, oh, what what do you think is the worst Marvel one? I say Ooh. Thor two. Ooh, yeah. That was yeah. I watched that and was like, that was disappointing. <laughs> that was that was horrible. It felt very D D ish. Like not D D like the fun game that we yeah. play sometimes, like D D with Jeremy Irons kinda yeah. like I like the idea they're going with they're trying to give like a Game of Thrones feel, which you know, you got all these like royalty and stuff, but it just did not feel right. <laughs> No, I'm also not a huge fan, and I get I get crap for this a lot of uh, the first Captain America. I thought it was a bit oh, long, see. montagey, and boring. See that I, that was like my wheelhouse because I love like the Rocketeer. Ah, That's like the same director, that '50s feel. I love that. So nice. And Chris Evans just like you know, freaking fits the role so well. <laughs> he really does. Yeah, I didn't care personally. I don't. I don't take these. I don't take these comic book things all that serious. And if you do, like. Get a life. <laughs> Get a life. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Face the D20, sir. You survived. How do you feel? Felt great. I could do more, but I know we had limited time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you could. Always, you're always welcome back on the channel, sir. Um, but any upcoming projects that you could uh, tease or spoil? Um, more random buys. Those are coming up. Don't worry. People always ask me, like, you just up doing the random buys? I'm like, no, I, I still do them. I just do one in December. Like, yeah. you know, I'm like every week. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, like I said, top 10 list. I'm going to try and do like random, like things that people haven't really heard of before. Uh, try and do more deck techs on, uh, commander stuff of like decks that are just random and weird. And maybe step out of the wheelhouse of magic. So we'll see. Hopefully. Awesome. Uh, man, Brandon, you are just a ton of fun. This is so awesome. Yeah, this is uh, awesome. Yeah. This, Blue this is, where can everyone find you? On Twitter, booster underscore tutor. I'm also on Instagram now. I added that. Uh, so it's basically just my Twitter. So <laughs> um, check out my channel, youtube.com slash booster tutor. And that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Do all the subscribes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, If you like this, uh, but you want to hear it just in podcast form exclusively, head on over to ConstructedCriticism.com to get the podcast form of the hive mind, again, exclusively on ConstructedCriticism.com. Also, uh, like I said before, if you want to go buy, sell, trade your paper magic, the gathering cards, head on over to cardsecure.com to do that. And if you're in the market for a cool custom uh, play mat, that is the Hive Mind or uh, 10th Street Hooligans, you can enter promo code Hive Mind MTG, get 10% off that awesome play mat. You don't even have to just get the, the, the Hive Mind one or uh, 10th Street Hooligans. You could get any of, of the awesome play mats that Inked Gaming has to offer with that promo code Hive Mind MTG to get 10% off. Uh, and again, uh, best way to support the channel is on Patreon. Uh, you could do cool things like Mr. Eric Williamson did uh, by asking questions uh, from the guests and have your 
your your names and the lights in the credits at the end. Uh, find me on this very channel. They said we said you could also find me on Twitter at Orzob Dunn. Until next time, Planeswalkers, I'll see you all in the multiverse. <laughs>